Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now we've got a Yamaha Grizzly 450 four-wheel drive quad bike on the hoist. This machine has been in before and I've done a few videos in the past covering servicing and brakes and other bits and pieces on there. Uh, it's getting to a point now where it's starting to get faults other than just your basic servicing work and the fault that it's come in with is gear selection now the gear lever itself is mounted up on the fuel tank and I'll, sh I'll take you across and show you the problem in a minute um, but basically you've got uh, I think it starts off you've got, you've got low at the front then you've got high then you've got neutral then you've got reverse and then you've got park um, engaging both low with the gear lever and park one or the other obviously uh, is getting more and more difficult and I think there's some problems with adjustment. Now um, because it's a problem at both extremities of travel of the gear lever then I think it's probably more likely there's a bush has worn. Uh, if it was adjustment then it would be going in really well at one end and it wouldn't be aligned at the other. That's my, just my take on things. Once we get in there we'll be able to find out what's going on and order the parts or make the adjustments or whatever because it needs to be fixed and at the moment when you try and engage low there's a bit of a delay and then there's a huge clunk from the gearbox because it's not quite engaged and then it sort of engages and that's going to over a period of time stress out those gears and it could tear teeth damage the teeth on the gears inside the gearbox you don't want a harsh gear selection that's a bad thing for a drivetrain okay so the bike's on the hoist we're inside, it's glorious sunshine outside, that's why the garage doors are closed, otherwise there's tremendous glare and everything goes really dark on the camera. Um, so just imagine beautiful sunshine here in New Zealand, which it is today, although, you know, being New Zealand, it could be torrential rain by this afternoon. Who knows? Okay, over to the bike and let's see what's, let's see what's going on. <clears throat> okay, so we're just going to verify the fault, just so you can see what's going on. And uh, we'll start the bike up. And shut off four wheel drive, there we go. And gear lever, we're in neutral at the moment. We want to go into high, that's fine. Go into low. There we go. So we have no we had no drive to start off with. Back into neutral. Back into low. See how on the gas and it takes a delay. For engagement. If I go back into reverse, and then go back into low. Oi, there you go. Okay, perfect. Right, let's take some panels off and see what's going on. There you go, on the seat. This is the, the rod basically that runs between the gear lever and down to the engine. Obviously we've got to press the brake pedal down to get into reverse and I can't do that from this side but it gives you an idea. So we're going to need to pull this off and we're going to look for any kind of um, wear first of all within that linkage. See if something's come loose, you know, that's what I'm looking for on this, on this one. Okay, so we're going to need Number eight. Alright, so this is the gearbox uh, input here, look, and we've got the, the end of the shaft coming down now. I was expecting to find, you know, sort of some kind of play going on. I'm moving that forwards and backwards. Okay, there's a little tiny bit of play in that rails joint there, look. But I don't think that's the, uh, the problem here. I think it could just be some adjustment required. So we'll check the other end, up by the gear lever, see how easy that is to get to 
and if there's no play on there, and I can't really feel much, uh, then we'll just give it a go at adjusting this rod and see if that cures the problem. Right, I think we'll uh, get rid of the old fuel tank cover. That'll give us a bit more room to get in there. I'm not entirely sure how this, this cowling comes off, if it can come off, but at least if we can uh, get a visual on the, the top end rose joint and to make sure that that one looks nice and tight as well. And we can also get some lube into the linkage. Yeah. Okay, so it's still pretty hard to get to is the uh, the linkage. So I'm going to undo these two bolts here, and then I think we can pull the whole unit away from the plastics and have a look behind it. None of this has ever been apart. This is the first time I think. By the looks of it. And of course that's the brake cable, the cable that comes from your, your foot brake, because you've got to press that down to engage reverse gear. Okay, so what I'd like to do is get this plastic cowl out of the way. Right, I think it's just these two bolts here, look. side, haven't we? Okay, so a little flat screwdriver should ping those off out of the way. And then get in there and have a really good look at that linkage. Don't stab yourself, Mr. Young. Let's choose something really pointed to stab myself with if I'm going to do it. combination of tools. Yeah. Oakley Oakley. Right. And on the gear lever there'll be a little screw. Cheers, Yamaha. Made my day. Okay, let's get rid of that now. Okay, so we're pretty much about as stripped down as we're going to get with this one. And I've done this really to show you what's inside as opposed to just fixing the problem because once you can see what's inside and how it works, then you've got an idea of what you need to do to fix it.
Now, we've got obviously the gear lever here. There's no um, indentation anymore. That's given to us purely the gate is done by the plastics, you know, as, as the, the lever drops into here. So there's no, oh, sorry, there's no steel gate as such. It's just all plastic. And you can see that's the plunger here from the brake lever, the, the foot pedal. And it purely prevents the lever from going down into reverse until that's pulled then it locks into their lock. And then again, you've got park, which will be the next one along. And it'll, that'll be the, about the extent of its travel. That'll be the park position. Okay, so what am I doing? Well, all we did this for was really to make sure that all this is working properly. That wouldn't affect the, uh, the gear selection, but also to make sure that there's no play in these rose joints. And there isn't. These are all, you know, as I, as I you know, they sh it should be on a bike of this age. They're all in really, really good condition. So all we really need to do at this point in time, um, hopefully it's going to be an external fault and not an internal gearbox fault, uh, is to slacken off these lock nuts. We've got one at this end, and if you saw earlier on when we were checking the other end of the, the linkage, there's one down there as well. And you slacken these two off. Now, one of them is a left-hand thread, which is this one, by the looks of it, and the one down there with a normal right-hand thread. You slacken the two lock nuts off, and then there's a flat about here on the shaft where you get a spanner on there and we can rotate that to adjust it. Now obviously we're not going to do that adjustment until this is bolted back in position because the position of this is massively going to affect the actual final adjustment. So we need to make sure that all this is back in position before we make that adjustment. I think whenever you remove this, you'd have to readjust the length of that rod anyway, because this is not going to be very accurately located on the bike. It's going to be in a slightly different position, which means that the adjustment will be out. So if you rebuilt your quad bike and you've taken this bit off, you really should double check your adjustment on that rod. Okay, yeah, you can see there, look, quite a lot of play on it. Yes, there'll be a torque setting. M8, probably 20 newton meters. Okay, so that's now bolted back in position. I think getting this cover back on is going to be a bit of a pain, but I'll uh, get the bolts in, but we'll work that one out. It shouldn't be. She shouldn't be impossible. Okay, right. Okay, so what do we need? 12 volt spanner? Yeah, there we go, look. So that one is the left hand thread, so it should go that way. There we go. So we'll just back that one off. And that's the right hand thread down the bottom. So now, as we rotate the adjuster, the distance, oh, which is a bit stiff. Oh, there we go, look. So I turn it, roll it around that way. You can see that the, the distance here is. But the rod is essentially getting longer and we took the other way and the rod's getting shorter now if you're doing a rebuild on this it'd be a good idea to put some copper paste on those threads because they look pretty rusty so i'll do that i'll extend it as far out as i dare i'll bang a bit of copper paste on those threads and then i'll do some adjustment okay and that's going to help the guy next time round. that's for sure I don't want all that rusting up Okay, so we'll just feed that back in now. Run that copper paste into the threads. Much nicer. Look at that. So you can see how it adjusts pretty easy. So I'm going to drop the bike down to the ground. Play around with the adjustment a little bit. Varying lengths of that rod to see if I can get it to be adjusted correctly. Now, I suppose ideally, really, I should have the gate on as well because we want this to be sat in a particular position to engage a particular gear so 
I'm just going to have to work my way in and try and tighten that up with a spanner once we've finished. Yeah, so I'll refit that uh, that cover now. Now, just before I do that, I'm just going to grease up, and I've got some what's this stuff? Three in one professional white lithium grease in an aerosol. Really useful for this kind of stuff and ideal. So I'm just going to spray all the linkage. Just before I cover the whole thing up, so I can't get to it again. Um, there's no grease nipples on here, unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. But hey, there are limits. Okay, right. So unfortunately, I'll have to undo these two bolts again, fit that cowl, bolt it back up, and then I can do the adjustments. Okay, Put that through there. Stick bars back. There, there we go. And the two bolts to go on on this end. Okay, now the two little clips on the back. A pain, but you won't see this. I think, in all honesty, we'll probably get where we're not fitting these again. If it was my quad, I think they'd stay off. But it's not my quad. Whew, nearly. The wonders of editing. Okay. Yeah, it's going to have to go on. You get some rough rider that's banging that across there. It could actually pop those out. So they're going to have to go in. Okay. Not really a lot of fun, but we'll give it a go. They were a real pain to get off as well. So, if you don't need to take them off, don't bother. Okay, that's one. Okay, one it is. The other one has disappeared somewhere. Welcome to the real world. Okay, so I'll pop that back in there. Really, very tight to pull this back in again. There we go. That works. Right. Perfect. Again. But it's worth doing it properly. No shortcuts. Right, let's give those a final tweak. Cool. 
Okay, so we're in neutral at the moment. That rod's fully adjustable. And I think once we put it in the park position, I'll be able to get to that lock nut at this end. That's cool. Oh, look. Just found it. I'll fit that later. Right. Okay, so bike back on the ground. Let's get it started up and do some adjustments. Oh, right. 12 mil spanner in hand, ready for we get the adjustment right. So we'll get it fired up. Shit. Okay. So I'll move up the reverse first of all. Okay, we've got that. Let's go back to low. So with a bit of fiddling around, I pretty much got it sussed now. It definitely was an adjustment fault. And uh, we need to just double check that everything's working correctly before we sign this job off and put all the bits and pieces back on again. So the first one that I've noticed is you've got two aspects to this. You've got the actual physical gear engagement and you've also got the lights on the dash because we've got um, a gear position indicator on the dash on the bike as well and it's really important that the lights respective to each gear do come on immediately and there's no delay and that tells us that the actual uh, shaft or the, the gear has been correctly engaged inside the gearbox it's basically fully engaged so I'm going to run through the gears showing you the lights on the dash and then I'll also put to camera the position of the gear lever going into gear as well now I'm doing this sort of whilst riding the bike so I'm moving the camera around so please forgive the crappy photography I have tried to mount the camera on the bike, but there's too much vibration and the, the, the image is crap. So we'll give it a go. Here we go. Okay, so we're in the neutral position now, and you can see that by the neutral light on here. I'm going to start the machine up, which is on there. And first of all, we're going to go for reverse. So we'll put the lever into reverse. 
and you can see immediately there's neutral again immediately we get the reverse light and press the throttle and the bike should immediately go backwards there we go look without any kind of clunks or delays foot back on the brake pedal again and we'll put it into neutral high there we go back on the gas yep that's cool back into reverse again bring the bike back oh, neutral into reverse there we go bring the bike back and then we're going to go for low ratio that was the problem gear before into low press the gas there we go look and away we go no no clunks no bangs no nothing back into reverse give it another go and back into low again for the gas and forwards we go okay well into park there we go there's your park you've normally got to rock these bikes a little bit to get the park light to come on that's quite normal and for low ratio there we go cool right really happy with that so the adjustment it's not uh, a really easy task it's a bit fiddly you know because you gotta lock the lock nuts every time that you make a bit of adjustment uh, and they are quite minor you know so you've got to really just play around with it go for a little ride take it out of the workshop see how it feels and uh, if you need to make another adjustment just make it it's really easy once the panels are off it's not a problem okay so that really uh, is uh, a common reason why the you get poor gear engagement uh, on these little grizzlies and it's just to do with that push rod adjustment and it is actually part of a service to make that adjustment and to make sure that the gears are all being selected properly the last thing you want to do is leave it and uh, it's going to you know potentially cause more problems inside the gearbox which is a far far more expensive fix you know if you've got a big heavy trailer on the back of there or the bike's carrying quite a lot of weight and it's it's banging into gear that's going to stress out the internal components in that gearbox and it's going to cause some problems further down the line so this kind of minor adjustment it's all part of the job you know most of those panels are off anyway when you're servicing the bike just do it it's part of it okay well my name's andy young i'm one of the automotive lecturers down at unitech i hope you found this video helpful i don't think there's any specs to put on this particular video so what you see is what you get um, if you'd like to subscribe then click on the subscribe button and if you want notifications as and when any new videos get uploaded, then click on the, the subscribe, click on notifications, and tick the box. Uh, and that way that will happen. You'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, and Twitter as well. So you can communicate through those any of those portals to me. But I would prefer, if possible, please, to communicate through YouTube. Just put a comment down there, and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Okay, well, hopefully it was helpful to you. Cheers. Over and out.